Good morning. It is Sunday, February the 27th. And last week in there, in our foundation series, we were looking at the question of who are we living for? Are we living for ourselves? Are we living for others? Or are we living for God? And so then it, it begs to ask the question that once we decide, like you You've gotten to that place where you're going, no, I am living for God. I am going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I am going to live for him. How do you do it? What does it mean to to say, I've followed, I am following Christ. I am determining to live my life for him. So how do I foster that expression, that purpose? for my life. One of the things that is going to be absolutely key, and and it is essential to our discipling, um, to our maturing as a follower of Jesus Christ, is what we do with God's Word. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verses 12 through 13, it says that the word of the Lord, the word of God, is sharper than any two-edged sword. It divides even uh, to the to the you know bone and marrow, um, to thoughts and intents of the heart. It is powerful in terms of the effect it can have on people, and particularly for those people who have determined that they are going to live for God. So. How do we take this tool that we have, this, this resource that God has given us, and make it best benefit that purpose that we say we are determined to fulfill? We are going to live for God. Okay, how do we use this tool? So first thing I would say is that if we are determined to use this tool well, we have to get into it. Um, the Bible as a resource is only as good as our familiarity with it and our um, our efforts to surrender ourselves to God using it on our lives. If indeed it is a sword, then are we going to utilize it in that way? Are we going to put the sword in God's hand and say, Here I am. Use it on me. And if that's the case, then I would say at a bare minimum, we have to read through God's Word. And particularly as followers of Jesus Christ, we have to read through the New Testament. Become familiar with it. If our goal is to um, understand, to live for, and to follow Jesus Christ, his teachings, his example, then we have to be familiar with them. We have to be students of the Bible. Now, a question that is reasonable to ask is, what are the obstacles to doing that? What makes it hard to read the Bible and to um, become acquainted with and understand Jesus Christ as revealed in these pages? I think, you know, one of the challenges is time. It takes time to read. You know, the Bible is a big book. And to acquaint ourselves with and to apply the teachings that are contained in these pages, that takes some time. It takes some immersing ourselves into it. Um, Another thing that I've heard from time to time is that people say, well, it's hard to understand. You know, there's concepts that are, um, you know, explained in the Bible, but unless we know historically what they were actually talking about, you can be left sitting there going, what is this? You know, there are some passages, even in the New Testament, that make you go, what are they talking about? And there are some tools that can help us, commentaries, those kinds of things. But again, what we're saying is that if it's hard to understand, then we have to go to the sources that can explain it well. Um, And we have to trust that the information they're giving us uh, is accurate and that it can be um, counted on to give us the right, you know, translation, the right um, 
pieces to pick up on based on the verses we've read. The other thing that is very clear, and and I think in some ways, uh, I know for me personally, um, coming from a background where I grew up on a farm, some of the um, stories that are that are in the New Testament, particularly through the Gospels, you know, when Jesus talks about sowing seed, when he talks about, you know, anything that involves the land or animals or anything like that, I, I get it. You grow up on a farm, you understand the the seasons of reaping and sowing and all of those kinds of things that happen. And so for me, those kinds of images ring very powerfully true. Not everybody was raised on a farm. So those different things that, that the Bible talks about and uses as illustrations may not be as powerful for you. Get uh, into a commentary or at the very least, um, talk to your pastor, talk to someone who can bring to life what it is that those passages were getting at. Um, another thing, and this is just straight up more basic. Some people don't like to read. Okay, still not an excuse. You know, the reality is that we have technology available to us that can make immersing ourselves into the Bible more than just an exercise in reading. The Bible has been um, put together in various different translations that make it easier to read, easier to understand. But then secondly, if you're still not on the page of saying, hey, you know, I, I'm a real uh, go-getter when it comes to reading, if you're not there, then there are audio Bibles. There are different tools that can make it, you know, easier and overcome that inertia. You know, I would say the other thing is that is really important, put the Bible in easy reach. You know, it's not like it's easy to lug this around all day long. But we have tablets, we have smartphones, and the reality is get a version, put it on your Bible, put it on your phone rather. And and what you will find if you're determined to to immerse yourself in the study of God's Word, you will find that there will be moments when, you know, you're standing in line. Okay, open your Bible. You're uh, sitting in a parking lot somewhere. You know, maybe uh, uh, you're out shopping and you're not shopping. Uh, maybe the store really didn't catch your fancy. So you sit there and... Lo and behold, your Bible is on your phone. Read away. Do you see? The point that I'm getting at is if getting into the Bible is difficult, remove the obstacles that are in the way. And the truth is we have uh, probably in our generation the most access to Scripture and to the explanation of it that any generation has ever had. Our literacy rates are higher. You know, we're not talking about the Middle Ages where, um, you know, only a select few could read. We have translations that are not only in English, but they're also in, you know, modern language. There's paraphrases. There's wonderful examples of the Bible being made so accessible that we're really... um we're really without excuse in terms of becoming familiar with it. Okay, so the reason why we'd be diving into the Bible is to get to know uh, the Lord that we're saying we want to live for. There's more um, that we would want to get out of God's Word. You see, it's not only that we learn about Jesus Christ and what his teachings were, what his example was, um, we're also looking about then the kind of people we need to be in t- relationship with Jesus. You know, in the process of studying the Bible, you're not only going to learn about Jesus, you're going to begin to learn about yourself as well. Here's a simple and easy aid, uh, aid to facilitate this. 
before you read, just pray this simple prayer. Holy Spirit, guide me as I read. Bring to light the things that I not only need to know about the Lord Jesus, but about myself as well. If you're reading from a paper version of the Bible, then by all means, underline the things that God shows you. If you're on your smartphone, highlight the verses that jump out at you and say something about yourself. The reality is this. We know that God wants us to know him. We also know that he wants us to know ourselves in the light of him. He doesn't want us to just have this fine, uh, you know, well-rounded knowledge of who Jesus Christ is and what his teachings were. He wants us to grow in relation to Jesus Christ. He wants us to be followers of him who know who we need to be in the light of who he is. So, you know, along with that, uh, it just naturally follows then that God will put all effort into revealing not only himself, but revealing us in relationship to him as well. It's a given. You know, when Paul was writing in um, Philippians and in chapter 3, I referenced this last week. Um, he says in verses 7 through 10, But whatever gains were to me now, I consider them a loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider those things garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him. Not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. And get this, he says, I want to know Christ. Yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participating in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Paul is saying that he wants to immerse himself in knowing Christ, but that that knowing would be transformational, that he himself would become like Christ. And so as we continue in this, uh, we will find that the knowledge of our Savior will grow, but we will also begin to understand ourselves in the light of Christ. What's the last thing that comes out of this? Um, When we have a knowledge of God, a knowledge of ourselves in relation to God, we will also then begin to understand what God wants from us in terms of the purpose of our lives. I love what Paul says in Romans chapter 8, verses 28 and and the first part of 29. He says, And we know that in all things God works for the good of those who love him, who've been called according to his purpose. For those God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. The word in Greek for conformed in this passage is somorphous. And what I love about this word is that it means a total conformity. Not just a superficial sort of outward um, kind of close approximation, but rather a full-blown representation that conforms in every way to the pattern that has been given. Why is this so important? Well, if indeed that we know that those, you know, things that God is working in us to accomplish his purpose, if we know that those things are there, to have us conform more and more to the image of Christ so that we increasingly represent him with greater clarity in this world, I think the reality is we will become more and more 
what God has in mind for us. And frankly, we will become more and more what our world needs. The world doesn't need superficial Christianity. The world doesn't need sort of this kind of, sort of, ish version of Christ being lived out in our lives. You know, the tragedy of our world is that so many things that Christians have done that the church has been responsible for have our fingerprints all over them. But people assume that those fingerprints are Christ's because his followers did that. And it couldn't be further from the truth. The fact is that, that the church has left its fingerprints at the scene of so many crimes in history. And unfortunately, those crimes have been laid at the feet of Christ and he had nothing to do with them. It wasn't his people even um, following after the will of God in any way, shape, or form. It was those people, us, carrying the name of Christ, but clearly not acting in relation to Christ. We were doing what we wanted, and we Christianized our motives. So we need to show something better. If, as we said last week, we are going to live for Christ, then number one, we need to know him. We need to know ourselves in the light of him. And then we need to know how to accomplish his purposes, representing him in a fully conformed fashion in this world. You know, it bears saying right now that maybe we need to pray to the Holy Spirit and, and ask God's Holy Spirit to reveal ways and, and areas in our lives when we have not represented Christ well. When we failed others in our attempts to do things for Him, and in this way, we can, in a measure, come clean and, you know, acknowledge those things not only before our Lord, but before those that, that we have um, done these things in. And through this, then, we can represent Christ more fully and more accurately as his followers. Let's take a moment to pray and to ask the Lord for the wisdom to be able to do this. <sighs> Father, there is a challenge in what we're looking at today. We say we want to follow you. We want to live our lives for you. Then clearly your word is one of the tools that needs to be applied. In it we'll find the knowledge and the information as to who you are and the example you set. Lord, we will also see a picture of ourselves, one that we need to be well acquainted with. But Lord, then we have, we have a purpose that we need to live out, and that is to represent you well with our actions. Father, search our hearts right now. Lord, search our hearts and reveal to us those things that, that have not represented you well, ways in which we have failed you in this world, ways that we need to recognize and ways that we need to apply ourselves with your help to undoing. Father, forgive us for those times. And Lord, help us now to determine not only that we would live for you, but that you would show us in far greater ways how to actually accomplish that. Lord, we thank you that you are committed to seeing this work done. And we pray this in Christ's name. Amen. 
So, as I indicated, it is Sunday, February the 27th. Next Sunday, uh, March the 6th, is our family service. So we're going to be uh, all together, uh, kids and adults together in the main service, and we're going to have lots of upbeat music and lots of opportunities to engage together and to see how we can represent Christ in our community. Looking forward to it again. So that's Sunday, March the 6th. This Sunday, children's ministry, nursery, all of those things for our families are um, going to be on tap, and we look forward to seeing each one, whether in person or online. God bless you. that fame never enough and you came along and put me back together and every desire is now satisfied here in your love oh there's nothing Turn my-